Hello, everybody. We're not really here to do a story or a deep dive today, but we have some exciting news to share. Um, based on the video that Stephanie and I did for you guys on Thursday, we got a lot of responses regarding people wanting us or Stephanie, she's the leader. I'm just here to be her assistant in this, um, to set up a, a Zoom group for people who have been A-B-U-S-E-D by the church, either spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever, mentally. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the Christian church, right, Stephanie? No. So if you come from any type of religious dogma um, and you feel like you maybe were mistreated, we'll say, because the A word is a little iffy on um, YouTube right now, <laughs> the algorithms. But if you feel like maybe you were gaslit or your mind was screwed up with for a little bit, then uh, Stephanie wants to open up a Zoom group. And again, we got a lot of positive response. Now, Stephanie, do you want to talk a little bit about your plans with this group or what you see going forward? Sure. Okay. So I've planned on three main groups. So because there might be some uh, sexual A, B, U, S, E, um, probably want to do gender based groups for the, for the, um, the mistreatment groups. If we're going to code the word there. Um, but the other thing too, I wanted to do was a specific group that's co-ed or whatever, both genders that is about deprogramming the mind um, <clears throat> from the dogma because that programming is so difficult to come out of and I've gone through it myself. So I wanted to make a program that I can help people reprogram their mind to understand they're worth something. Um, they have an inner knowing spiritually. They don't need a book to tell them how to live um, and kind of reprogram from all the programming that goes into whatever religious organization you come from. Right. Right. And all of us, and again, guys, it, it doesn't, we're not looking, you don't have to have like a, a salacious story of something that happened to you in these religious organizations. You can, of course, it can obviously be somebody who's had a very dramatic thing happen to them. But even if you just think maybe you were gaslit a little bit by the teaching, um, that's okay too. Or maybe, you know, what if someone, Stephanie doesn't know if they've been uh, messed with by the church, are they welcome to come as well? Yes. I didn't know I was until I did a video on it and I wrote everything down that I was like irritated with by the church. And then I said to myself, Oh my gosh, I've actually been. It's okay. I can believe it. I've been mistreated by the church. So I guess this led me on this re uh, revelation that I need to start setting up um, groups to help others because I've gone through it and I've come out of it and I'm, I'm at peace with things now where I can then now help people. You can identify it too. Um, I know for me, cause I've been through <coughs> trauma therapy, which I've spoken about a lot. And I went through trauma therapy because of a relationship I was in, but ABUSE looks the same regardless of whether it's, it's all the same stuff. I didn't know what gaslighting was, you know, gaslighting is a technique that these people that, mistreat you and manipulate you by making that you feel like you're the crazy one or you're the bad one by twisting situations. And we know that a lot of pastors and priests and of course, other re religious leaders are notorious for using not all of them, but most of them, most of them for using religious doctrine and twisting it to validate their actions and scorn you. This is a huge um, red flag for a CULT as well on um, what they do for mind control. It's a way to mind control you. I mean, I know, Stephanie, we've talked a lot about how our fear of the unknown has lifted since leaving these religious organizations. I'm closer to God, source, the divine creator than I ever have been. I feel like there was a blockage there when I was a part of this organization um, and I never quite fit into that organization for obvious reasons now that I know. Um, but I, like you talked about gaslighting, and I think gaslighting is one of the most difficult forms of mistreatment to identify. Yeah. And that's actually the one I've gone through the most with this organization. Um, and I've also gone through it on a personal level with uh, past relationships as well. 
so I can easily identify it and I can help people identify it too. Um, something I also want to talk about in the groups is like if you're part of something right now currently kind of helping transition people into identifying the mistreatment and then pursuing a different uh, avenue, if you will, you know, into help helping people self-identify um, their own relationship with their creator. They're like we talk, you talk about so often the inner knowing rather than the outer knowing. The organization is that outer knowing. I have this very deep inner knowing now, and I'm at peace with it, and I'm very confident in it. And I want to help everyone, you know, anyone who needs help along their journey with it. And it's kind of like one of those things where you just kind of, if you feel the not, if you feel the need to talk about what you've gone through, um, if you're comfortable with it. Sometimes it just helps to listen to other people's stories. You don't necessarily have to sit there and, and throw your whole life experiences out on the table in front of people on Zoom. Um, it's if you're comfortable with it. Um, and as well, too, I want to bring up with the men's group, I'm trying to find somebody to lead that. Um, I have a couple of people in mind. So that will, you know, we'll figure that out right. um, in the near future as well. And I will say too, with Zoom, and of course, Stephanie and I know this because we work with Zoom a lot. If you if you want to join this group and you're shy to speak, or you're kind of shy to even let your identity be known on the Zoom application on your laptop or your cell phone, you can opt to put an avatar up and change your name as well. And we will respect that. So if you want to join mm -hmm. the group and not show your face or give your real name and just sit and listen then we will respect that. You're absolutely still welcome to be there because I agree sometimes um, listening to other people's stories helps you recognize a uh, pattern in your own story. And so if that's where you are right now, then, then you're absolutely welcome. You don't have to, you never have to talk if you don't want to. If you're just getting benefit from listening to people speak about their issues, then absolutely, you're absolutely, totally, totally welcome to join that. And, it, and it's, this is not going to be recorded. We're not going to be recording any of this, these meetings, we're not going to be posting them anywhere. So we can allow people to be very um, candid, if they want to be in their vulnerabilities and the issues that they have gone through, we can keep that very private for you. I promise you, I won't be putting it up on my channel. So um, I won't either. Yeah, I would never No, it's going to be like as if you were to go to a regular support group, it's, it's confidential, it stays within the group. Mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure we all would respect that. Um, and like you said, you don't have to necessarily show your face <clears throat> or disclose your actual name either. Um, it's more or less to help people who are going through this because, you know, going through myself, I had nobody there for me at the time. So I want to change that. Um, yeah. We all need to feel like we're a family and help each other out. And like you say, we're walking each other home. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, yeah. In this new world, we're going to be helping each other out more. And you don't have to, it doesn't cost anything to, to join us either. I want to make that clear as well. I mean, if someone's wanting to donate or whatever, that's fine. But I'm, we're not, this is a no cost thing. Um, so you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I'm broke. I can't afford it. No, this is whoever. And we're not, uh, neither Stephanie nor I are licensed therapists. But so what we're literally doing is trying to give you guys a place to come and talk and we can learn from each other because at this point, I don't even trust professionals anyway, at this point, yeah. you know, as far as, I mean, I had a great <laughs> therapist myself that I loved, mm -hmm. but I understand that people are very, um, weary of professionals, which I don't blame you because I am too, you know? So, um, that's, we're just coming at this from a very friendly place for people to bond and talk a support group. Like you said, it's just us talking to each other about our own experiences. And I think that these little communities are the way of the future. We don't need to have, you know, I, I've, I don't know if I've told this story on, on my channel before or, or Zublix. I can't remember where I told this story. I hope my mother doesn't mind me saying this, but, um, when my parents got divorced, when I was right, they, they started the, divorce proceedings when I was in high school, but it finished after I was out of high school. And at this point I was no longer at home, but we had gone to church every single Sunday as a kid, like the Presbyterian church. And my mother, when she was going through the divorce with my father, um, went to the priest, the preacher for counseling. 
And he would counsel her because she didn't want to get the divorce. You know, she was struggling emotionally and spiritually because we're told in church circles that divorce is bad, which we know from the gospel of the Holy 12, that it's not, Jesus says it's necessary sometimes. There's that. Um, and so my mom was going through this counseling. And then uh, one Sunday after my mother had been through the counseling with the, the preacher, my sister, my little sister, my mom were sitting in the pews and the preacher started talking about the sins of divorce after he had counseled my mother through it. And my mother grabbed my sister's hand. They walked out and never went back again. That's a B U S C guy. That's, that's mental, mental mistreatment. That preacher knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly what he was doing. Most people who engage in this type of mind control and mistreatment of the mind and of the emotions know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. A lot of preachers or even elders or deacons or whoever, uh, like use scripture for spiritual manipulation to, to justify their actions. Yeah. Like, like a lot of it is a lot of dominance over woman. Mm -hmm. They'll use the scripture for that too. So you might actually be in your own relationship out of outside of church where you're getting spiritually manipulated by your partner. Yeah. Again, oh, yeah, that's, that's what... the case. Join. Yeah, we uh, we talk about that on Zublix channel on Tuesdays within the second hour. I'm with him. We have been breaking down some of these fundamentalist CULTs. And you, you see that a lot um, where the husbands will. T I mean, there's some situations I've seen from my research into these fundamentalist groups where the husband even dominates what the wife eats, what she can and cannot eat. Y'all, that's a B U S E. Todd Roderick does not control what I eat at all that's not good so yeah if, if, if even so if you are in say you're in a situation where you're stuck in one of these groups and your husband is is like that and you want to just join our group just to have that moral support as you make your decisions then we will keep you anonymous totally fine we understand we absolutely understand mm -hmm. um i almost lost my life one night with uh my ex-partner who was a b u s i v e to me and um, so I get that 100%. Um, and maybe I could talk more about that in the private group because uh, unfortunately that story, because it is so horrific, will get flagged on YouTube. So we can even bring our own stories into it to kick it off if, if you guys are feeling uncomfortable. But what's the name of the group, Stephanie? What are we going to call it? It's um, I chose Amazing Grace Support Group. And the reason I chose that name is because that song talks about um, being free, free of our chains by the grace of God and how his grace is amazing. So I, I, it came to me really quickly and I, it just felt right. So I chose yeah. that name for it. And we're going to put the email address. I know in the other video I said to email Stephanie, but just in order, we get tons and tons and tons of emails. And so, and, and because this is so <laughs> important, um, we're going to have a separate email address down in the description box below. That's going to go to Stephanie. Um, if you're interested in joining one of these groups again, so we can keep it private, I'm assuming we'll come up with like a little disclaimer to send to people that they agree to. So we won't share each yeah. other's information. Yep. I will make a disclaimer. I'm also going to put on this video too, um, just verbally, I neither one of us or anybody who leads these groups, we can't give you any kind of medical advice. We can't give you any kind of like advice a therapist would, because we are again, not licensed. I do have a medical background and I do have a background in behavioral health. However, I'm not licensed. Um, I'm working on getting a friend who is pretty much awake, who is a therapist, um, possibly to assist with certain things. If, if this goes if this gets a little bit bigger and I need somebody just to kind of supervise, at least she is licensed um, and she's one of my best friends. So um, I, I don't know if that will happen yet. She, she's got her hands full, but um, we'll see what happens with that. But as, as far as right now, we cannot give any advice. It's just more or less, let's talk about it and help each other out and support each other. And vent, you can vent if you want, if you want yeah. to. And I will tell you too, in case anybody's nervous about any of the calls accidentally being recorded. Um, for me, for example, uh, the way my Zoom is set up, I have to admit people into. So when Stephanie logs in, I have to admit her into the, the Zoom room. And then if she wanted to record, I would have to give her permission to record. And so we'll set it up that way where the person hosting, Stephanie or myself, 
whoever's hosting will actually have to give people permission to record. And so nobody can just record it at will. And of course, we're not going to give permission to anybody to record, um, you know, because this is private stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, if you're interesting, we're, we're still in the very genesis of this group that Stephanie is leading. This is Stephanie's group. I want to make that very, very clear that she's the one that came up with this idea. This is her baby. Um, but so we'll see, it's going to grow and change obviously as, as things do when they're birth, they evolve and they change and they, you know, we figure things out and you guys know and how that works. And so, um, you know, and we might get to the point where we have to even divide it by age groups as well. If it gets so big, like, you know, because different age groups are going to have different perspectives on things. And so, um, you know, we'll just see what happens, but I'm really excited yeah. about this. Cause I do think this is, you know, when people like talk about Nasara and all that kind of stuff, I never think about like money that never comes into my head. I think about the way that our life is going to change. Right. And I think this is part of it. We're going to start really being each other's neighbors. And uh, what was Yahshua's two rules to live by? Love thy God with all thy heart and love each other as I have loved you. And that's what we're, we're walking into a place. The church doesn't love us, guys. Someone who loves you doesn't treat you that way. The way that they, they treat you. The way it's your own personal you. relationship with your creator. Mm -hmm. It's not an outer source of it. Um, and this will allow two people who need that fellowship mm -hmm. to have that fellowship. Because, like, I know I've needed fellowship. And that's actually the main reason I go to church in the first place is I like, as much as I like having my alone time, I, I also like to socialize as well. And uh, sometimes we just, uh, we need to be around people that are like-minded too. So that will help boost up the uh, frequency as well, being around like-minded, awakened people. A lot of us are lonely in this journey. I know I'm the only one awake in my family, so you know, that will help me out <laughs> and uh, probably help other people out too. I think, I think it's a win-win on multiple levels. Yeah. And in the future, if it gets big enough, like you said, maybe divide by uh, even ages and I might need some more volunteers in the future. So if that's something you're, you've already overcome and you're, you're at peace with everything and um, you think that might be something you're interested in, that's something I will definitely talk about in the future not now because it's probably gonna start off a little on the smaller side yeah yeah we'll just see where it goes and again i, I absolutely think this is the this is what what tomorrow is going to look like you know i know our friend janine talks about that we have to create that we have to rebuild that and i think this is an excellent step in that direction again we're not going to ask you for money this is nothing to do with paying for the service this is just about us coming together to help each other um, because we are we are brothers and sisters. This is our earth. We are humanity and we need to love on each other and just listen. And sometimes I don't know about you, Stephanie, but sometimes I just want to vent. You yeah. know, I just need We're a not. It's, a lot of times I feel guilty. I'm like, am I gossiping? No, I have to vent like I have to verbally expel the energy mm -hmm. because I absorb so many energies because of that empathic trait that I have. And some people who are like that or even if you're not we absorb certain energies and we have to verbally release it. And so it helps to kind of get that out verbally yeah. and it helps you feel a little bit better. And it's in a safe, confidential environment and uh, we're not going to judge you. Um, and the other thing I was just thinking of too, is uh, I know there's probably people around the world that might be interested in this. So um, we're going to have to probably talk about different countries yeah. So yeah, listen. But time, times, and everything. I speak English in a little bit of redneck. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> I studied French and Spanish in school. I flunked Spanish. <laughs> no <Yeah>. habla espanol. <laughs> All I think I remember from French is je ne sais pas. I don't know. I don't know. Je ne sais pas. I know how to say my pants are on fire and I know how to say I'm crazy in the head in Spanish. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not like language is not my, my forte. Yeah, not all, either. So. I mean, hell down here in the deep South, we have so many different accents down here in the deep South. You got your New Orleans accent, you got your low country accent. And you just got to keep up with people around you to figure out what they're saying. Up here in the Northeast, we have our Boston accent, a Boston accent. They go to park the car, park the car. And then we have our New York accent, but in Connecticut, uh, yeah, 
where Northeast, you don't have a lot of accents, just those two city accents. Yeah, we got a lot of different ones. I mean, I will tell you guys, I'm deep South born and bred. I love being from the deep South because it's such a mystical place to be from. A lot of folklore down here, all that good stuff. But down in South Georgia, <laughs> if I go into the gas station, sometimes I don't even know what they're saying. My grandmother was from, my dad's mom was from South Georgia. They add an ER onto everything. She did too. And she had her master's. She would say the piano, go play the piano. She played the piano, the piano, the winder. Uh, uh, yeah. Know. I've heard, I've heard the, uh, that accent too before. Yeah. And that's it, South Georgia. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had a, in the medical field, we had, a, I had a couple, now that you're reminding me, I had a couple of patients with that ER at the end of everything. And, uh, when they go to explain their um, body issues with the ER at the end, I forgot what word in particular. I'm trying to think about it, but it may, it, I'd laugh inside because I'm like, oh, this is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, it's the, yeah. But anyway, we will definitely in the future, maybe if you're from like, a, if you're a Spanish speaker and you want to help lead a group of only Spanish speakers or French speaker and only French speakers or German, whatever it is, we might need those volunteers because Stephanie and I are just like, no, we're, we're, no, <laughs> I'm not good with that. <laughs> it was so funny. I was thinking about, you're talking about the accent. So when you film with Jean-Claude, he always ends it with au revoir because he's French, but down here in the South and our French classes, au revoir. <laughs> so I'm just like, bye. Other, 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 other. Yeah, the utter, utter, yeah. Yeah, so, because I'm like, I'm not going to even embarrass myself and try to try to say that properly because it's not going to be cute. So, um, I wish I had a funky accent, but no, I don't. <laughs> well, did you see from our last video, somebody was laughing because they were talking about the Jean-Claude and Janine's Canadian accents. And they're like, well, we think you guys have accents. And I do understand oh, really? that. Really? I lived in London for a bit when I was younger and um, I had people always commenting on my American accent. Um, hmm. Yeah, this was in the early 2000s. And I remember it was right when Britney Spears was like getting big. And I had somebody very fascinated with the fact that I was American and wanted to know if I personally knew Britney Spears. And I was like, oh, she's been freed, by the way. Did you see that? I saw that. I was like, no, no America's big country. <laughs> like, I don't know her. <laughs> don't know her mm -hmm. um nope. so um and then of course i spent a lot of time in india which uh very different language different accent too so so that is something that we will we will we will entertain with humor at this point as we are because we are still limited sometimes by our communication when we don't speak the same language <laughs> but with that being said trauma and that kind of ptsd is the same regardless of where you're from in the world and so again i'm just going to just reiterate, you don't have to be coming from a Christian religion to be a part of this. This phenomenon of, of dominance and mistreatment are in every single organized religion. So it can be, you could be coming out of a Jewish temple, a Muslim mosque, a Hindu temple, whatever it is, whatever, Buddhism, whatever you come from, if you've experienced that kind of uh, control, mind control and mistreatment, then... Um, I in. think that would actually help the Christian community too to to see how similar uh, the same mistreatment is in, in other religions as well. Kind of like um, teaming up together. Yeah, we need that. We need that that unity. The yeah. Religion was just put in place to uh, divide us. That's yeah. all it is. It's a mechanism of division. Yeah, Jesus didn't start a religion. He didn't even he didn't even like organized religion. No. No, he went in the temple and through the tables. <laughs> yeah, no, and they all they uh, kind of like yeah. that he was feisty like that. Yeah, I mean they put a hit on him. The rev I mean it was the religious leaders that put a hit on him multiple times. There was multiple hits that he had to escape. So riddle me that, Batman. If we can look at the mirror yeah. and what's happening now versus what was happening then. Who are the good guys and the bad guys? You may ask. Well, let's let's look at the common denominators here more that's deep say, dives to come that's all i'll say about that all yeah. right guys so once again we're gonna have the email down in the description box below please contact
Stephanie through that particular email if you want to be associated with these support groups. Um, other emails, it's just crazy, guys. We and we, I'm so grateful for all the people that email me, but it just gets really overwhelming. So we don't want to make we want to make sure that we have a separate account for people for this specific project so nobody gets forgotten we don't want to forget anybody we don't want to miss any emails we want to make sure everybody that wants to be a part of that is included because everybody who wants to be a part of this is included we want you here the other and thing i, I want to i just want to say really quick is in the email you don't have to go into your story or anything like that i just need to know if you're interested and what time uh zone you're in that's uh, one thing I need to know. Time zone, if you're male or female, or if you want to do the deprogramming group, or if there's multiple, like if you're a woman that needs to be deprogrammed, but you've gone through A, B, U, S, E, you know, say exactly what group you're interested in. So there's the men's, there's the women's, and then there's the deprogramming. Yeah. So and those now, three for now. Right now, are we going to be taking people under the age of 18? How are you feeling about that? Because that might be a question that pops up. Why don't I do an 18 and under group then? Okay, so we'll do four. And I'm okay with that. This is stuff I enjoy to do. It's not going to take too much energy out of me. I'm very comfortable with it. Um, we can do an under 18, but I need to have permission from a parent. So with the 18 and under group, so if you are, and I don't know how many people I have that watch me that are actually under the age of 18, but if you are under the age of 18 and you, you think that this is something you would be interested in, um, if you contact Stephanie, let's just say, um, maybe Stephanie, you need to speak to their parents. If they can leave you contact with their parent. What I might set up is a permission slip. Not that we're in school or anything. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And then, um, cause I didn't even think about this. I just popped and, in my uh, head that we might yeah. have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're 18 and under, let me know. And then I will figure out the best course of action just because of liability in the new future. I don't think there's going to be all this liability stuff going on, but right now, unfortunately we're still stuck in a little bit of the matrix zone uh, on the physical you know, playing here. Yeah. So um, I'll figure it out. And I have a lot of um, past history with um, that kind of stuff from being in the medical field. So I kind of know the right wording and everything and, and I'll figure it out. Perfect. So, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll figure it out because I think that's important too, because I don't want to leave anybody out. Right. Especially yeah. if you're like 17 and you're with it and you know what's going on. We definitely you know, it's a difference between a 10 year old and a 17 year old, you know, there's a huge difference there. So um, we definitely will figure that out. So anyway, so we're going to have, so that's the four groups. We have the women's group, the men's group, deprogramming group, and then the um, under 18 group, the youth, we'll call it the youth group, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll call, yeah, youth group. Specify which one that you would want to be in. And you can be, so if you're a woman and you want to do the depro, you can do both groups, right? If you're like a woman who yeah. also wants to be part of the, the co -co deprogramming, deprogramming is both genders together. Yeah. It's more or less, okay, I, this is a question I've had a lot of, well, how do I pray? Because we know certain words are bad now. And so, honestly, I think it's all intention. But yeah, that's, just, that's just yeah. me. I don't think, you know, Yeshua is going to have a hissy fit because you call him Jesus. Yeah. You know, he knows your intention behind it. He knows you don't mean Lucifer. So, because, you know, he's smarter than any of us all put together. So, <laughs> he knows. Um, but it's, it's more or less like I'm going to be teaching people um, how to get out of that, like understanding that divination tools are not bad. Um, not saying you have to use them, but what have we been doing today? <laughs> we, we've been, we've been <laughs> long story, <laughs> checking some things out. We've just been asking some questions. <laughs> we've been, we've certainly. been going down some rabbit holes yeah. with our tools. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but yes, so I'm going to go into how uh, things were flip flops because I'm, I'm doing all my deep dives. And I think it's super important that people follow me on Dark Outpost on Thursdays at two o'clock too. 
Um, and then doing the deep dives with the two of us too, because that's really going to help people kind of understand just how live to we were and kind of reprogramming the mind. Like, okay, that scripture did not mean that. And mm -hmm. uh, so I need to, and it's, it's, it's going to be a reiteration of you've been lied to, but let's, let's, instead of we're going, we're going to go through this whole angry step. Cause I think we need to, we have, we need to be angry. We need to yeah. acknowledge it. Anger, Anger is normal. Yeah, and it's friction creates you, change. It's how you act with your anger. Are you going to allow your anger to motivate you to be, you know, to flourish? Or are you going to let it kind of keep you stand a standstill? So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about like uh, the, um, what is it called? You always say that I'm, I'm having a brain fart here. The cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. Um and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think it's going to be really, really helpful. And I actually see that more or less filling up after disclosure, especially as people start to really awaken in masses, especially the um, church community, mm -hmm. any kind of church. Um, and then I almost want in the, in the future, not now, this is not going to be anywhere now, probably having a group specifically geared toward um, clergy, pastors, priests, rabbis, stuff like that. I mean, because there's a small percentage of those people that are innocent as well that thought they were doing yeah. the right thing and they weren't. They don't they yeah. realize that the church is part of the dark. Mm -hmm. I just feel that. like spiritually I'm being guided. This is actually going to be a, a, a very large thing. Not not right off the bat because everything has to start off small. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of just getting my feet wet with this. And then um, as things progress, I think that it will become, um, you know, almost not like a school, but. I don't even think schools are going to exist, you know, I don't learning, think, learning yeah. centers. I don't think you know. religious institutions will exist no. either in the future. Cause it's all part of the, the uh, hospitals. Well, there's going to be a group. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. again for, for people who are coming from a religious background, because Stephanie and I, are, and I are made it our mission to out the um, dastardly deeds of the church and the, and show you where the church is a part of this group, this bunch, as Janine says, I does love not it. mean we, Chris, um, we are very much a part of our, we are, our lives are very much um, intertwined with God. We, we, I'm constantly praying. I'm constantly, this has not altered my, uh, what well, actually it has altered my relationship with God in a very positive way. Yeah. Neither Stephanie nor I have turned the other direction and said, well, screw it. There is no God, no, that in the fact opposite. Now I see clearly, I see clearly that this is demonic, that what we have been taught is demonic and they've done it intentionally in order to sway the energy of the people towards their timeline, not towards God's timeline. It's more toward fear. It's a fear-based uh, community. We need to start taking that and we need to start learning and growing from it. And we need to make it into a very positive energy, um, increase the frequency level so that um, we're getting people out of that fear based zone because that feeds the beast. We know yeah, literally um, and fear, fear creates an energy called loosh. Yeah. Look this up. Fear creates an energy called loosh. They feed off of that. That's what demons feed off of. Yeah. So they're doing that to you intentionally. So you admit this energy where they can feed off of you. And as they feed off of you, your energy, your life force drops. And the cycle continues. So literally fear is not, I mean, in the canonized Bible alone, as, as altered as, as it has been 365 times, God tells us, do not fear. Don't be afraid. Fear Once is false. Day. Uh, yeah. Fear is false evidence appearing real. And the church is really good at making you fearful of a lot of things and you have nothing to be afraid of because you are a child of God. And that's what we want to instill in you guys is giving you your power back. Take that sovereignty back. You know, that's part of the support group as well. Yep. And recognizing your own special relationship with your own creator. You, we each have an individual uh, connection to him. And I think that's super important to realize that he created each and every single person to specifically um <clears throat> use their gifts for humanity um and it's up to us individually to recognize what our gifts are not to have the church say oh 
yeah, you, you're um, a prophet or you, you have the gift of discernment. Oh, you got the gift of tongues and all that kind of stuff. No, it's up to you to recognize that from what you feel in your heart and your soul and your mind of what God is telling you. It's not up to a pastor. It's not up to a priest. And I went so long, so disappointed. I knew my gifts, but I was always gaslighted about it. Like, yeah, do I really? Are, am I sure? How do I know? And it's, it's turned into, no, I just know. End of story. Yeah. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. We want it. We want the support group to be a place where you feel comfortable. So you, because getting your power back, you taking your sovereignty and your power back is something you have to do yourself, but we can give it's you that choice. support. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we're about. We're about each individual person having their own opinions, having their own choices, having their own relationship with God. We're not about this. Like you, you do what I say and only I say, and that's, that's the way it goes. No, we're not about that. So we want you, you to stand in your own power. And in order for you to stand in your own power, you have to do your own healing to, in order to do that. And if we can, or Stephanie, anybody can or offer a place where that can begin for you, then you're on like, the right track. Well, first of all, if you go to a, a Christian therapist, you know, they're still in that matrix. Mm -hmm. Um and a regular therapist might not understand fully. So that's where it's like, okay, there has to be a safe spot for these individuals. Cause I didn't have anybody to go to. I, I had to learn this all on my own really, but a big part of it was like, okay, for me personally, before I had my own channel, I would watch you, you know, the esoteric Atlanta channel where I'd watch Janine or whoever. And that was like, you know, kind of how I, started to heal. And then one of my good, good friends who was my red pill, she was, she grew up in the church and she uh, went through um, a little bit of uh, something that didn't sit well with her. So she left and then she started uh, searching on her own for her own spirituality. And so she was a huge help in getting me out of that too. And I can't tell you how great I feel and how at peace I feel like even simply with the fact of I used to have fear of people passing over because it's like where is their soul their souls going and now we know better I have such a peace I'm okay if, if I lose somebody it's sad but it's not like oh my god I'm in fear I'm in such fear of like where are they going oh they're not they're not they're not born again and I mentioned this on one of my videos I don't know if you saw this video I mentioned how what is born again what is born again well, now we know we incarnate, we're reborn, and we're reborn, and we're reborn until we learn. We're on this, this journey of the soul, this evolution of the soul, and when we get to where we have to be with our soul, is that where we're given passage into eternal life. Yeah. I don't know. And I just, I was like thinking, I was like something in my head told me, why don't you just, <clears throat> guys, I'm not a tarot card reader. I, we're not, I mean, we're just messing around. I'm trying to learn them again. I've had these cards for a long time and I've been trying to kind of figure them out. We're not Janine, but I did pull, I said, what, what do you want people watching to know? I asked God, what do you want people to know about this? And I got this card, which symbolizes new beginnings. I got the strength card. So there you go, guys. New beginnings and <laughs> listen, I've said this so many times and I'll say it again. You are stronger than you think you are. That is why they've done what they've done. They've gone to all this effort because they don't want you to know how special and how strong you are. And these are much... pictures too. They're pictures. They're this is paper. Yeah. This, this is just yeah, they're just cards. It's just it's kind of like a way to pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's communication. Well, you know, with tarot cards, I was, I'm, I've been kind of looking into the, the history of tarot cards because I, I wanted to do a deep dive um, so people can know the history. Because I feel like, with a, especially with a church, once you know the history, you realize these things aren't dangerous, you know? And if you have, if you're still wary about ta uh, tarot cards, if you have a stack of playing cards in your house, which most people do, those were the original tarot cards. And I want to mention these two. Who created these? These God. are crystals. God created these. He created the earth, so he created these. These are full of high-frequency vibrations, and it helps 
with healing. It's not, you're not relying on the crystal to heal you or assist you. It's just, it's a tool that you use to increase your vibrational frequency so that you're coming out of the third density, which is why they took it away from you. Um, and that's what uh, in Atlanta, so I'm looking, I have a whole plate of crystals down here. In Atlanta, they use crystals for energy, to create energy. Mm -hmm. Like this black tourmaline right here, this is specifically for psychic, yep. um, psychic and spiritual attack. Yep. And EMFs. Well, yep. 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 Um, and, say, uh, and guys, I just want to mention too, it's a year ago, if you told me I'd have any of these things, I would have told you um, that's blasphemous and um, yeah, um, I'm not going to hell and I'm not going to touch that. And oh my gosh. And it, it was out of my comfort zone to own any of this stuff at first. It was very out of my comfort zone. I've done a lot of meditation, praying upon it. And God, I have heard from God so clearly and he has reassured me. I am not sinning as long as my intentions are of the light. Yeah, absolutely. It's all on the intent. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when I first started playing with uh, rocks and crystals, this was years ago, uh, I was having some knee issues <clears throat> and I was told to get selenite. This is selenite. Oh yeah. I've seen that before. Um, and like, I've got a bad <laughs> hip right now. And so just like placing it on there to help it kind of whatever energy needs to heal that, but it also helps you sleep selenite. So that's why I it's on my, I'm in my bedroom. It's right beside my bedside table is the selenite and selenite also helps cleanse crystals and rocks. So if you have that around your, it helps cleanse it as well. These are all created by God. And if you guys remember from our deep dive, we did on Thursday, we spoke a little bit about, um, pharmakia being sorcery, which is. They flip flopped it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sorcery is pharmakia. It's not cards. It's not crystals. It's not, not pendulums. Yeah, it's no. not any of that. No, God created those things. It was twisted and flip-flopped on you so that you couldn't raise your vibrational frequency yeah. or that you because, couldn't connect. Because this is a spiritual world. World, war, war. Yeah. Let me rephrase that because of YouTube. This is a spiritual W-A-R. So what are they trying to take away from you? Yeah. Your spirituality. So you can't fight. Yeah. So, yep. so yes. So anyway, kind of a tangent, but yes. Um, God is good. And we're moving into this new earth together. All right, guys. So if you want to join us and uh, join that support group, emails down in the description box below, just shoot Stephanie an email with again, which four groups you want to be a part of. I'm going to put that again down in the description box so you can see again, which, what the four groups are. Um, and yeah. And again, don't worry about telling us your life story yet. You don't have to write long emails, just put what you want. And then when we come together in person or on zoom, um, then we can get into each other's stories. So, all right. And also I'm going to put a link to Stephanie's uh, channel down in the description box too. So if you're not following Stephanie, great resource. If you are coming out of these organizations, she does a lot of videos on what this type of ABUSE looks like, how to spot it, how to figure it out for yourself. So you can go ahead and follow her. So you can go and catch up on those videos. So you kind of start to have some understanding because knowledge is power um, in this situation. So Ignorance is bliss sometimes, but most time knowledge is power. So, and I'm also going to be putting a link to Stephanie's Etsy shop, Etsy shop as well. As you know, from our last video together, we are going to be doing a drawing for some of uh, her products. So go ahead and check her Etsy shop out guys. And all right. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Stephanie, thank you so much. And well, thank you for hosting this wonderful video so we can get the word out. Absolutely. We'll speak again. All right. Bye guys. No